you let me thank you for this interview because I always like to get in touch with Chinese people and uh, this is a, 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 one more way. In this forum, you wrote an article called What's Europeans Understanding of China? Uh, actually, I have a feeling, I feel um, many Europeans, not all of them, of course, many Europeans um, they do not know China very well. What I said, but I mean, even culturally minded people in Europe, we have a what we call Eurocentric approach, mm -hmm. uh, which means that we have been accustomed because of colonialism, because of the Industrial Revolution, because of some historical events which happened in the. We are accustomed to be at the center of the world, but uh, uh, and. Some people still consider the, the world scenery as in this, in this perspective, which is not the case anymore. And, and then now Southeast Asia is developing Japan, uh, uh, all Southeastern Asian countries, India, they are becoming uh, some of the, 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 the main actors on the world scene. And the so-called GDP, the overall production of the world is going towards these countries. And we represent uh, only a fraction, a smaller and smaller fraction of this wealth and of this part um, in the, on the world scenery and on the world history. Um, and so people sometimes are confused because our books of history hardly speak about the history of China. In this perspective, a better knowledge, more cultural exchanges, will be extremely useful and instrumental. And in your article, you also mentioned that culture and the arts contributed to shaping public opinions on social and uh, political issues. Could you please elaborate on this point? What is uh, the most, the highest level, the most sophisticated, the most valuable level of communication? Arts. Yes. Uh, uh, it's obvious because in the artistic expression, uh, people express uh, all their humanity, all the best part of their feelings through literature, through poetry, through cinema. Um, but also there are some other kinds of, of arts. For instance, what uh, personally, um, uh, apart all the above mentioned sectors, I have been shocked in a positive way, by architecture in China, by urbanism. Because when you see the development of cities like Shanghai, like Beijing, like any other city uh, all, all over China, I've been in Xinjiang, and I have been to Hainan, I've been to Yunnan. Uh, uh, you, you, you see this development, you see this, the structures of the city. You, you can't refrain from being amazed by what has happened in such a short time. Because what um, my, my children who had been to China before being to the United States were not shocked by, by Manhattan in New York because they had seen Shanghai, because they had seen uh, Hong Kong, because they had seen uh, Beijing. Uh, so for them, for them, uh, Manhattan was quite normal. When I went for the first time to the United States, I was amazed. And, and this is uh, so arts and, and the, is the highest and most sophisticated level of communication. And indeed, it must it, it can play an important role. According to your experience, how can China and uh, Europe enhance mutual trust? I, I want to speak about trust. I would uh, speak about mutual understanding. And then confidence will come afterwards. So if people don't know them deeply, uh, you, cannot, you cannot have a real trust. I used, I give you an example. I used to work um, for many years uh, at the European Commission, at the Commission of the European Union, which is a sort of a big um, government with minist different ministries. And I was in the sector of science and technology. And I was in charge of international relations 
uh, in the last years, in the last 12, 13 years, in charge of projects, joint projects between European Union scientists and Chinese uh, scientists. And I witnessed uh, through my experience that uh, these groups of scientists who came together proposing a project, when once the project was approved and financially supported by the European Union Commission, they started working together. And I witnessed month after month, uh, year after year, project normally lasts three years, that their confidence, their trust um, uh, were in, was increasing with the passing of the time. Because people uh, knew each other better, they visited the other counterpart, they saw them uh, act in their national context, they saw, they appreciated the counterparts as um, scientists, as researchers, as innovators, but overall as human beings. And this was an extremely positive uh, approach. And this influenced my life very, very much um, and gave me confidence in the possibility for people to meet, to work together, to appreciate mutually and to understand the differences and also the elements in common. People to people exchange is very important and this is also the first panel's topic of this forum. Well, we are all human beings, so we need to, to, to get in touch. We need, after we got in touch, to, to communicate. We need to see how these people live what the shape of their families is, how, what's the structure of the family, what are the political institutions of a certain country, and in which context, in the, especially if the political context is very different, like it is between China and Europe. Uh, and we, if, if we leave aside uh, prejudices, if we don't start from the viewpoint that our way of conceiving the society and the political such is the better. If you consider also the others could be good, as good as ours, then you, uh, we, we can start talking objectively, we can talk on a foot, on a um, position of equality, and then see that every system has its advantages, its assets, it has its disadvantages, its liabilities, and that both can be can be increased the advantages or reduce the liabilities and the defects.